What I got today is a fascinating guitar that I didn't even know existed a couple of years ago. You might say it's just a Telecaster. Is it though? Look closely. What do you see? Do you see anything that is unusual or out of place? Like this guy here? Or this guy here? What I got here is a 96 Fender American Standard Telecaster B-Bender and what it does is, in the name of it, it bends the B-string. It does so with the help of a mechanism called the B-Bender or String Bender. It was invented way back in the 60s by a couple of famous musicians and I'm gonna try to tell you the fascinating story behind it. What it does is this, look closely at the mechanism near the B-String on the back. What do we got for the specs? We have alder body, one piece maple neck, 22 frets, single coil pickups. And for the controls we have master volume, master tone, three way switch and of course the B-Bender mechanism. So it is a very cool brown sunburst 96 Fender Telecaster that happens to have the B-Bender mechanism. And on top of it, it's also a 50 year anniversary model that this sticker shows. I'm going to fully disassemble this B-Bender, tell you the amazing story behind inventing it and how I found out about it. There's a greatly written story in the Fender official website about Clarence White and Jim Parsons and I'm gonna read through it. The famous Birds guitarist Clarence White and his bandmate Jim Parsons opened up a whole new world for guitar players. Even before Clarence White joined the Birds in the late 60s, he was already a revered guitarist. As a teenager, he was a flat-picking bluegrass pioneer as a member of the Country Boys, later known as the Kentucky Colonels, with his brothers Eric and Roland. When he switched to electric guitar, White's legend only grew, as his mastery of the groundbreaking string bender invention attached to his legendary 54 two-tone sunburst Telecaster opened a unique style of playing adopted by a lot of famous musicians. Famously, White was the first to employ this contraption, or as the story goes, White was looking for a way to play steel pedal licks on his tele while playing in a band called Nashville West in 67. To achieve this without the B-Bender, he would try to bend the note behind the nut, but that proved challenging. White's bandmate, multi-instrumentalist Jim Parsons also had experience working on guitars and banjos. Together they devised what would come to be known as the Parsons White pull string which was eventually called the string bender and later the b-bender. Parsons thought was to use the shoulder strap to bend the note by utilizing spring-loaded levers inside the guitar's body, which connects the bridge to the strap button on the upper bout. The strap button itself was attached to a lever that moves up and down about an inch. When you wear the guitar over your shoulder and push down on the neck, the pressure pulls the strap button upward, activating the lever system and raising the pitch of the b-string by a whole tone, up to a c-sharp. The hard part was bringing the string bender to life. White of course didn't want to route out his tele like any guitarist, so Parsons actually mounted it on the back of the guitar. A wooden rim mirrored the shape of the Telecaster was added at the back as well. It was all covered by a piece of masonite, effectively doubling the thickness of the guitar. With that game changing alteration made, those steel like bends were more easily achieved, opening a bridge between country and rock. White's talents with the new contraption are all over the birds, you ain't going nowhere, buckaroo and lover of the bayou. The string bender was hardly the only modification for this iconic guitar though. After recording the birds ballad of the Easy Rider, the neck pickup was swapped for a Stratocaster pickup, while also adding two banjo tuners to the high E and A strings to allow for quick tune changes. Of course, the design you see on the guitar that I have today was perfected through the years and changed a bit, for mass production. Unfortunately, Clarence White died tragically in 1973 when he was struck by a drunk driver while loading gear into his car. But the original string bender tele is in capable hands as country legend Marty Stewart bought it from White's family. There is a great video in the reverb of Marty Stewart explaining his story with the guitar. Check it out.
Jimmy Page used the Parson White string bender of Led Zeppelin's All of My Love and 10 Years Gone, artists like Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Pete Townsend from The Who, Bernie Leadon from The Eagles, and a bit unusual, a heavy metal guitarist James Hetfield from Metallica used it to record Unforgiven 2. Here comes the interesting part. Parsons began making and installing the string bender himself in 73. He produced hundreds of units over many years before partnering with California folk musician Meridian Green in 89 to increase production. Parsons and Green eventually approached the Fender Custom Shop, resulting in the signature Clarence White Telecaster model, which was introduced in 95 and featured the modified Parsons White B Bender. About 200 of these guitars were built throughout 2002. Not longer after the Custom Shop's 95 introduction of the B-Bender equipped white model, however, Fender also decided to introduce a production version of the guitar. Parsons and Green modified the B-Bender once again for the mass production of this instrument, which was introduced in 1996 as the American standard B-Bender Telecaster. The guitar that I have today is the 1996 American standard model. The first production model was called the American standard B-Bender Telecaster. This guitar included two American standard pickups and a three-way selector switch. The guitar body is solid outer wood with a 1952 style sharp radius, a one-piece maple neck and a maple fretboard with rolled edges. 25.5 inch scale laden with 22 medium jumbo frets, die cast tuners and triple I pick guard. The bridge is an American Telecaster series through the body model with six individually adjustable stainless steel saddles. The Parsons Green B Bender device is factory installed in the routed out back of the guitar and covered by a chrome plate. This model was available in candy apple red, black, vintage white or the one that I got, brown sunburst and it was made in the United States. Later models include the 1998 Hot Rolled American that includes three pickups instead of two and the 2000 American Nashville model. A couple of years ago I didn't even know about the B Bender. I found out about it through James Hetfield's Unforgiven 2 and this is the only way to play the song as it was recorded with a B-Bender. Well, I think that without a doubt I can say that I have my hands full with this one. I'm gonna do my best and learn as much as I can. I'm not really a Terracaster guy but this one was just too interesting. So please correct me in the comments if I get something wrong. What do we got for the specs? First of all, we have one piece older body, one piece maple neck. 22 medium jumbo frets, single coil pickups that seem to be the original for the Fender American Telecaster standard series, three-way selector, master volume, master tone controls. We got the traditional Telecaster headstock with a string retainer and of course the party piece, the string bender or B bender and I'm gonna go in further detail later on in the video. The usual flat Telecaster bridge with strings through body construction and one of the saddles is specially made to accommodate for the B-Bender, I'm gonna show you later on as well. So with the pickguard and bridge already disassembled, let's go further in depth. With everything almost out of the way, I don't wanna disconnect any wires, we have a better view of the cavities, starting with the neck one. It's wider than the pickup itself, so I was able to remove the pickguard easily. Here we have some routing for the cables of the pickup. And this little guy, I have tried finding some official information online about it, but there isn't any. So if you know what exactly it is, let me know in the comments. Most people online claim that this is for orienting the CNC machines and various tools, but I've actually figured out what this is about. It is in fact meant for a gigging musician's salary. Here you go buddy, don't spend it all in one place. This is what the cavity for the bridge pickup looks like and there is a ground wire going through the body and exiting underneath the bridge making contact with the metal plate I'm gonna show you, here it is. Unscrewing the small plate for the controls reveals a couple of uh, 250k pots for the volume and tone, some routing for the pickup wires, some ground wires, the three-way switch, a uh, capacitor, and basically those are the cavities of the Telecaster, three of them, four including this one. I didn't have any official information about the pickups but I've gathered this much that these are the original pickups and the number on them corresponds to the plastic used for the pickups. I've seen this number on a lot of different model of pickups so I'm assuming it's for the plastic and here is the bridge pickup 
it's basically the same number but finishes on 10 and here is a better look of the pickup and black and yellow wires here is a closer look of the controls you got the three-way switch this is the I think original wiring and then we have a couple of 250k pots with the numbers on them and a capacitor and that is pretty much it for the electronics now I'm gonna close this all up and move to the party piece the bib bender uh, once again a reminder I'm not very good with Telecaster so if you guys know what these pickups are please let me know in the comments so we can identify them before I close it up I wanted to show you how to remove the bridge unfortunately it is not that easy it is held by three of those huge screws and they are under the saddles so it requires removing three of the saddles on the plus side this is a good opportunity to show you one of them five of them look like this except the B string one of course it is cut from the back so the B strings feeds from the back of the bridge time to put all of this together and measure the pickups the bridge pickup measures at 7.16k now the neck it is at 7.50k and the middle position is 3.73 the control scheme is usual for the Telecaster type of guitar three-way blade switch master volume master tone and here is the bridge assembled I wanted to give you guys a better look of this B-string saddle the way that it's cut from the back you see there is a hole in the back of the bridge that feeds to the B-bender moving over to this gorgeous one-piece maple neck bolt-on construction of course and it has those black side dot inlays and black dot inlays on the fingerboard some of them have wear like for example this on the 12th fret 17th fret as well 25 and a half inch scale length and we are gonna measure the radius in a minute now let's go ahead and grab the measurements of the neck the nut is 42.5 millimeters wide or 1.67 inch 12th fret measures at 51.5 millimeters or 2.02 inches first fret thickness is 21.2 millimeters or 0.83 inches thickness of the 12th fret 22.2 millimeters or 0.87 inches the scale length is 25.5 inches and the radius is 9.5 inches throughout. C-shaped neck profile at the 1st and 12th frets. <laughs> no wonder this Telecaster B-Bender feels comfortable. A Telecaster shaped headstock and this is the hole for the truss rod adjustment nut. Let me give you a closer look of that and the nut as well. And we have 6 inline tuners the Fender Made in USA logo, Telecaster and a string retainer. Enough with the standard stuff, time for some fun, the back. Here is the mind bending back of this Telecaster and I've already removed the B-Bender. I've done this so we can have a better look of the cavities and I see here it's routed almost all the way to the front of the guitar. It has paint and clear coat on the inside, maybe if you want to install a clear plastic cover, strings through body construction and here is where the B-Bender exits. This is what the B-Bender looks from the inside, the strap button is attached to a lever that moves up and down about an inch, when you wear the guitar over your shoulder and push down on the neck, the pressure pulls the strap button upward, activating the lever system and rising the pitch of the B-string by a whole tone, up to C-sharp. This is what the cover of the B-Bender looks like has 10 screws on it this wheel is attached to a spring on the strap side of the mechanism and fine tunes the bent note to be exactly C sharp it can be a bit snappy and noisy and here you can have a better look of the fine tuning wheel on the inside of the mechanism a rubber ceiling ring and this is the part of the mechanism that guides the B string to the top of the guitar back of the neck reveals the bolt-on construction with a fender metal plate it is of course one piece maple neck meaning that doesn't have a fingerboard and this is the way to route the truss rod inside of it the back of the headstock features this 50 year anniversary sticker meaning that this is not only a special guitar being a bib bender but it's also an anniversary model 46 being the year that leo fender started his company the 50 year anniversary sticker also confirms that this is a 96 guitar 
and the serial number reads N6N stands for 90s, 6s, 96. The official Fender serial number lookup also confirms that this is a brown sunburst American standard Telecaster 50 year anniversary. I don't think those shallow strap buttons are original though, it shows on the back where the screw has been cut like this to fit. One more shallow strap button at the back and let's have a look at the output jack. You're not gonna be using an angle jack with this one, you need a straight one in order to fit. This is what the back of the American Standard Telecaster looks like with the bender installed in place. I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration. You can see it working. In a minute, when I put the strings on, I'm gonna show you how to fine tune the B string using this wheel. The entire B bender mechanism is held in place by 10 screws. It is really securely placed and don't touch those and those, therefore the mechanisms inside the B-Bender. There are two ways to put the strings on a B-Bender. One is the traditional way with the six strings through the body. Why would you want to do that? Well, if for some reason the B-Bender is malfunctioning, you are still able to use the Telecaster as a typical guitar. If you want to use it the B-Bender way, you put five strings through here and only the B-string through the mechanism. Let's go ahead and put some strings on it. Just for coolness effect, I'm gonna use those Labella Bender rock and roll strings, 1046 gauge. You can pause at any time and read those. They're a bit gimmicky, supposed to sound like the old strings from the 60s. For the B Bender, it is actually recommended to use at least 13 gauge for the B string. So we are right there. In case you're extra curious what those strings are, here is the inside of the packaging. Pause and read at any time. Tuning the B-Bender and specifically the B-String. First of all, we make sure that the B-String is in tune. You want the B-Bender to bend one full step, for example, to C-Sharp. Right now, it's somewhere between C and C-Sharp. And the way you do this, this way it's sharp, this way is flat. I want to make it sharper, so I'm rotating the sharp. I overshot it a bit. Perfect. And that's how you tune the B string on the B bender. This is the weight of the B bender and I think around 700 grams was the B bender mechanism itself. <laughs> This B-Bender is 
absolutely astonishing and I am in no way capable of playing it properly. Excuse me for playing it sloppy through a metal amp, but I wanted to share this guitar with you because every time somebody comes in the shop and I show it to them, they're amazed. A lot of people don't know about the B-Bender and the great legacy of Clarence White and Jim Parsons. The B-Bender inspired a lot of musicians including Jimmy Page and James Hetfield and I think it will continue to do so throughout the years. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. And subscribe!